Hi there. Welcome to Discussions with the Fashion Masters. My name is Deanna Hansen, and we have a very special presentation for you today. We are going to be talking about your breast tissue and do your breasts vibrate in health? My guest today is Tammy Coldschmidt from Thermography for Health in New York, and she is the creator of the course, The Eight Secrets to Optimal Breast Health. Now, I've gotten to know Tammy pretty well, and I have to say, I am truly blown away by this incredible woman's knowledge, how she ties everything together from spirituality to emotion, how we think, how we feel in our bodies, specifically regarding the breast tissue, but it connects to absolutely everything as well. So Tammy, I want to thank you so much for being here. Please take it over and share with us everything you know. <laughs> Thank you, Deanna. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, one of my passions is really talking about um, optimal wellness and the path to getting there. Because I can say that my path started um, at birth. Um, I was very sick through my entire childhood from like age birth to 20. I was literally on antibiotics and steroids the entire time, maybe a one week a month where I would go off of it and then I would go right back on it. So needless to say, my immune system was a mess. My gut health was a mess. And it all started from constant chronic pneumonia, bronchitis, sinusitis, and the worst thing of all was um, debilitating asthma. Um, basically, in those days, this was the 70s, there was no such thing as a rescue inhaler. So as a tiny little kid, if I couldn't breathe, we were off to the hospital. And every time we got to the hospital, we got injections. So the amount of um, toxicity that I had in my body from prescription drugs alone, which by the way, I mean, saved my life on many occasions, um, kind of was destroying my health as I got older. So that led me on the path to wellness. I studied everything from crystals to uh, tarot cards to um, homeopathy to Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, anything that could pull me out of the cycle of dysfunction and prescription drugs. So I will say when I was my earliest memory around age three, I literally saw my, my body pull up. I would say my higher self pull up out of my body and look down on this little tiny three-year-old struggling to survive. Um, and I heard the message and what I can only call my angels at that time. Um, they just literally told me that I was being pulled out of my body so that I could hold the energy to live until I could get to the hospital and get the injections that I needed. And from, so from a tiny child, I learned how to breathe <laughs> because I couldn't breathe. So when I found your blocks, I, I have to give them due credit. They really helped open up my lungs and I have tons of scar tissue in my lungs. So your blocks became a significant part of my healing journey, which is why I think we're together today. So that's kind of my healing story, which still continues because the toxicity of those drugs, I've cleared a lot of it out of my system, but I still have a lot of hypersensitive reactions um, that I'm always managing. But I can tell you, um, healing happens on four levels, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So the work that I've created in my life has been across those four levels. I started off as a periotherapist, which is basically a higher level of being a dental hygienist. I got very into healing of the mouth. And that led me into thermography because I wanted to see the true inflammatory pathways that were in the body, not just in the mouth. I mean, one of the great things of working in the mouth, you can see the destruction. You don't need and you know, necessarily need all these tests. You can look in someone's mouth and tell what's going on in their body. So I went from uh, periotherapy into thermography and also in the midst of all that came body talk. And that is where I bridge the gap between the physical with mental, emotional, and spiritual healing. And so that's everything that I do as a practitioner, but I'm also an educator. And that's how this course was developed. 
it was developed through the hundreds of women that I've worked with through the years. I've watched them suffer with anxiety. I've watched them suffer with just self-rejection of their body. I've watched them suffer with actual diseases, cancer. Um, I mean, you name it, I've seen it in my clinic because of all the different things that I do. So that's kind of who I am. And that's why I developed the eight secrets to optimal breast health. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. And isn't it amazing how when we create something out of our own struggles, the authenticity around it is, is so incredibly valuable. And then to apply that to other women that you're working with and, and to see the changes in them, it's, it's just beautiful. So let's dive in and talk about this. Okay. So, um, well, let's just start why it's called the eight secrets. It's there's There are eight secrets, but I actually added um, two more. So there's 10 total. And each secret takes the woman into a deeper part of themselves. And it definitely goes into first, the structural components of the breast and how to take care of the breast. Then it goes into digestion. You are what you digest. Then it goes into breathing and the breath of life. Uh, with, without our breath, uh, there is no life. We, we can live without food and water, but we cannot live without our breath. <laughs> um, so that's one of my favorite secrets. And then from breath, we go into the emotions and the consciousness of the breast. And then we go into spinal messaging. How does your spine and nervous system communicate with your body, but also with your breasts? Women forget that the nervous system plays a lot in how well your um, breasts are harmonizing and, and actually flowing. Um, I also go into uh, sex and pleasure and sleep. And finally, dreams, because we have no idea the depth of our dreams. Even if you think that you don't dream when you sleep, you, you do. You go into the deepest caverns of yourself and that's where healing begins. So it really goes it dives deep into these places that most people don't really think of when they think of their breasts. Oh, it's very exciting. Yeah. I have some pretty weird dreams at times. So I can't wait to hear more about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and here, you know, here's another thing that uh, one woman said to me, she said, why could, how can there be so many secrets? All my breasts do are, is hang there. And oh, that, wow. Yeah, that took me right into, um, well, you're, you are probably one of my most perfect students because you don't get beyond the fact that they just hang there, right? So when we talk about dreams, for someone like that, I think it would be really fun to just kind of tap into her dreams. And I would wonder if they're trying to connect her to her breasts. And those are some little like tidbits of things that women don't realize they don't put the pieces together of what's going on in their dreams to their life. Basically, it could be any part of your body. And then of course, what's directly underneath the breast tissue, the heart and the lungs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yes. And so that's another thing we talk about too. Um, the heart and the lungs, but also the chakra system, the fourth chakra, that's your heart chakra. That's also the governing chakra of the breasts. So we definitely do talk about that. Um, and actually this slide is a good one, uh, since we're talking about energy, energy flows where your attention goes. And I, I mean, to put it simply, it's like whatever you are putting your attention on is where your energy is going to flow. So if there is a negative thought patterns happening, whether it's about your breasts or your belly or your jealousies, whatever it is, we, we all have these as women, your energy is going to go there. And so then the question is, what kind of vibration are you sending to that body part or even that person that you might be jealous of? So energy flows where your attention goes is a huge concept that uh, more women need, need to understand. I mean, humans, right? Men too. But um, since this course is really based on divine feminine, um, this is a big one. And one of the things I say in the course is I want to know one thing that you love about your breasts, because 
that starts to change the relationship that you have to your breast by starting to admit something. And that admission becomes a transmission. And that transmission is a direct vibration. And that vibration can lead you to optimal health or it can lead you to the vibration of illness. Um, and that, just to give you a, a, a simple thought of what vibration means, healthy cells vibrate at about 78 megahertz. Cancer cells vibrate at around 32 megahertz. So when you are filling the body or the mind with negativity, you keep dropping the vibration and eventually your cells will drop to that vibration because our cells are constantly looking for homeostasis and they wanna be at that 78 or even better if, if they can be. Um, so that's why when we get into deeper consciousness uh, talk about the breast, you have to understand what vibration is. Any, do you want to comment on that at all, Deanna? Just yeah, please. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I had a breast reduction when I was in my, in my early twenties and I used to have so much shame about their size. I wanted to hide. And just recently on our trauma summit, we had one of our speakers, Dr. Marlene Siegel talking about the frequency of shame being the lowest frequency and then the frequency of gratitude being the highest frequency. So it, it was really interesting because I ended up having a breast reduction, which I think we're going to be talking a little bit about regret at some point. There, there was a lot of time that I had a lot of regret about that. However, on the flip side of that, I used what had happened to me as a result of that surgery as a teaching moment so that I could really understand how to remove the scars that ended up adhering to my ribs that affected my breathing so that I could actually learn how to remove scar tissue from bone, which became a foundational piece of, of what I teach. So um, being able to look at something and shift the perspective um, that that has really helped me fall in love with my body where I used to kind of despise it. Exactly. And, and that, like you just said, falling in love and despising again, that is a transmission of energy. Your, your thoughts go to your cells are listening guys. They're communicating with your thoughts. So it's really important that you put vibration in a frame of reference for yourself um, and try to catch yourself on a daily basis of what, what your thoughts are wrapping around. Um, Cause I'm going to tell you every organ, every endocrine gland and every body part has a consciousness it intrinsically knows what to do and how to communicate. It knows how to protect us. And it also has a memory. So it, it, our cells remember everything that's ever happened to us. So if the consciousness or the emotion is still charged, right? If we haven't let it go, that memory lives at a, at a vibration in the body, even though it's in the past. And, you know, it's interesting because we, we, Deanna, you said before when we were talking that, that it's like there is no past, there is no future, there is the now. However, when there's an electrical charge held in our cells from the past, that can be a major disruptor in your now, in your present moment. Why? Because your thoughts keep circling back to it. So in the course, I give, I do give techniques and ideas and things that you can do to start to reframe and rewrite the memories that are held in your cells. You can hold on to positive charge. It does not have to be um, always negative. And I will say, it's not that you're going to forget things that have happened to you, but it's your perspective on them. And that takes the energetic charge out of the body. Once you have a different perspective, you have um, clarity on your present and exactly what you need to be focusing on in your life right now. And I just love how empowering that is. We, we don't have to be locked into a world that we once believed was true. We actually can change our present, which means we get to change our future from the path that we were on. And that's very exciting. It is. I mean, it's, it's everything. Um, 
it's like we're never going to get rid of stress. It, it's just always going to be there. But it's how you move through stress um, in the four levels of your being, which is physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And actually, since the, um, doing the course has all of those elements in it, and I do want to add secret 11 and secret 12 one day. And Deanna is going to be a part of probably secret 11, which is scar tissue. Um, and that's where I'm going to bring the blocks in because I've found after doing the blocks that it is a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual experience. It's, it's not just physical. I've laid those blocks on my breast and I've just had tears drain out of my body and I didn't know why. It doesn't matter. You don't always need to know why. You just need to know that you're connecting to an emotional charge and you're releasing it. That's what's important. So um, on the slide, you're going to see um, three main consciousness issues that are held in the breast tissue. Now, in the course, there are 10 of them and we go deeply into 10 of them. Um, we go through a lot. We go through your circadian rhythm and, and the actual meridians and chakras that are involved, but we're going to keep it simple here. And I want to touch on three that I think are pertinent, um, resentment, regret, and resistance. So resentment is actually a direct link to cancer. Energetically, resentment is like a hard fibrotic ball with little tentacles um, and that actually mimics like a tumor. Um, now regret drops very deep on the vibration scale. And Deanna, you were mentioning how shame is of the lowest vibration. It is followed by guilt. And what does regret usually come from is a place of shame and guilt. And it's, if it's not about another person, it's usually about yourself right? What you did or what you didn't do. And you probably did or didn't do any of those things because of guilt and shame. Um, and then the third one is resistance. So this is a big one for women. We are so filled with resistance. Half the time, we don't even realize that when we resist, we, we block divine uh, feminine energy. And what I mean by that is naturally women are receptive, right? We, we should be the receivers, but what ends up happening is we overgive. We give so much of ourselves that we end up depleting ourselves and we drain our life force to the point where um, we become in resistance to our own life, or even when it comes to when we're really needed, either by ourselves or another, we just don't have it in us anymore. Everyone, I'm sure every woman has felt that burnout. So these three consciousnesses, um, especially resistance, need to be examined on all levels. What are you physically resisting? Um, you know, are you physically resisting a certain type of food because of your shame about your body? That's, an, that, that's definitely a, a frequency that you have to manage. Um, are you resisting feeling your emotions? Because if you feel them, you're going to blow up and then who knows what will happen? Your world will crumble. I'm here to tell you it's better that it crumbles than for you to implode and hold it in. And then you've got your mental state. What are you resisting mentally? Are you resisting changing your thoughts? Are you resisting going in a positive direction because the negative is your comfort zone? And are you making a lot of excuses for yourself? That's also part of resistance. Um, and then spiritual resistance. Why we resist receiving and joy is beyond me. But if you take a really good look at yourself, that might be the cornerstone of, I would say, one of your biggest blocks is resisting pleasure. And I have a whole course um, a module, I should say, in the secrets about pleasure. And when we think of pleasure, we always think of sex or self-pleasure, but pleasure is really paying attention to your five senses because we filter in everything through our five senses. And that's where your perception of pleasure can come from. 
So I'm hoping, and if you have any questions on these, because it does go a little deep, uh, you can always email me or Deanna and we will definitely get back to you. And just about that resentment, um, it, it's so funny how, I mean, you can see how the resistance creates the resentment and the regret and you get caught in a loop. It's kind of like the pain fear cycle. And yes. for me, when I have felt times of resentment, I almost feel like my cells have sharp little jagged teeth on them. Like it, it is a very, a very palpable internal sensation where I feel very ugly when I have that sensation of resentment. And yeah. so, yeah, it's, it's not something that you want to hold on to. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I will, it's, these things all really negative emotions in general, create chaos um, in the body on different levels of our energy being and cancer thrives in chaos. Cancer literally is the disease of a chaotic terrain. Um, the environment that you create in your body, whether it's through the food that you eat, the water that you drink, the thoughts that you have, or just what you're, you're taking in right from all the different media sources. A lot of it is chaos. So you have to every day, you have to keep sifting through the chaos and letting those things go. Let me see. I'm going to go to the next slide. Ah, yes. Angel whispers. Um, so this was a technique that I developed through an actual body talk session when I was asking the, the matrix of the divine feminine what it was that most women need to hear. And mind you, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of women. And what I found is that the, these three statements came through in a whisper. And it's basically, you have clarity whenever you ask for it. Ease is with you as you work and as you sleep. And believe in yourself trust in your knowing, and have faith in the outcome. These are the whispers that we need to keep sort of fueling ourselves with on a daily basis. And what I did, how I decided that it was um, going to be best um, brought in to a woman's routine, because it's like the last thing we need is another thing to do. But I can tell you that this is amazing. So besides having a block um, at my bed, on my couch, and at my desk, I also have a plumed feather. And um, one is hot pink, you know, one is purple, <laughs> this one's white. Now, if you're, if you're familiar with the blocks, you know that the blocks bring an enormous amount of pressure into the body and you get this great release. So the feather is almost the opposite. The feather is a very, very light touch. It's a stimulation of pleasure that we probably never give ourselves. And you're literally whispering these statements to yourself as you take the feather and you just stroke your skin. From your neck, you can go all around your face, over your breasts, down your belly and beyond. Take your time and just feel the way the feather touches your skin. And as you feel that sensation and you say these things to yourself over and over, you're connecting a mind body experience to a particular hormone. And that hormone is oxytocin. So when oxytocin come in, comes in and it floods the body, it is your feel good hormone. What it does is it drops cortisol almost immediately. It's like, it just stops the stress hormone from taking over your cells. So between using the blocks for the pressure aspect and using the feather for the light healing touch and for stimulating oxytocin and pleasure, you have a pretty good self-care program going that um, I, I mean, I've done a lot of self-care. <laughs> I mean, as you can imagine, and these two things are, are probably the simplest and the most bang for your buck. So I think you should give it a try. And also if these angel whispers, these three statements aren't right for you, you can come up with your own. You can say anything to yourself as long as it's of the highest vibration. 
Any anything to comment on that, Diana? I just I just love the the um the, the dynamic of the two. You know, as you said, like one is very like that's what we need because we 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 have all of these proprioceptors in the body and and all of these incredible opportunities to feel. So to provide something so contrary to the other really brings in both sides of the coin and and really it all comes back down to living in the balance and if we have both both sides that's how we get to that balancing point so this is beautiful thank you oh you're welcome um and if any of you uh are not understanding what body talk is i'll just give a quick explanation it is a healing it's an energetic healing modality where you talk you tap into the subconscious of the person that you're working with, and you can hear the hidden messages that are stored deep in the subconscious, um, or even stored in the actual physical body or in their energy field. And those messages come forward so that the person can begin to heal. And again, it can happen physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. Um, it can go back in time and it can go into all the way back into ancestral and generational healing. So there's really no boundary with body talk. It's really what that person needs for optimal well-being. So when I did angel whispers, I had the intention of coming at it in a general way of hearing what a woman needs to hear. And if you read those um, statements, it's, they're really, it's really about feeling supported and feeling safe and feeling like you know what you're doing in your life. <laughs> That's what it is. It's knowing that you're clear, that you're going to have answers and that you're always going to be supported. And that's also what body talk brings. It brings clarity, it brings support, and it gets you in touch with your, um, your intuition, your instinct, and also your logical brain because we need all three. We can't just derive from one brain. But so when I talk about the three brains, you have the brain in your head, that's your logic. You have the brain in your heart, that's your emotional intelligence. And the brain in your gut, that is your gut instinct. It's your true north. It's your yes and your no, bottom line. So if you're cut off from your gut or if it's always inflamed, chances are your instincts aren't as sharp as they could be. So that's another reason um, why I love the blocks because they open up that uh, the, the diaphragm and the gut and they release that inflammation and that energetically puts you in touch with your instinct. And I feel like a lot of us have lost our true north. That's just what I'm feeling with a lot of my clients, they're lost. I totally agree. And I, I love body talk. I've had body talk sessions and it, it's truly fascinating because especially when, when you cover the ancestral issues and, and, and you're like, wow, how, how would I have ever figured out that five generations ago, my grandfather, like I pulled something from there or whatever, like it's, it's truly fascinating and, and just so invaluable, especially today, because I feel like because we live in a world that is so toxic we are just overloaded and that also takes us away of course from that intuition so yeah where things may have been where, where things in past may have been more at our fingertips or within our reach of understanding i feel like we've been pulled further and further away from that that power within and to have these availabilities for people to connect back is is really what we need it is. And, and I will say also, I feel like um, not enough people are talking about sex in a way that, that, uh, that can be sacred to a woman. Um, you know, and that's one thing that I go into in the course is figuring out what is sacred in, in, in sex for you. And it's so different for all of us. There isn't, it's for some women, it's not about sex per se as much as it is about the complete release of all of the stress that they're feeling in their body and in their mind. So sex is, can be used and brought up in your life in so many different ways. And 
I, I honestly feel like more women need to find their own self-pleasure instead of relying on a partner. They need to understand how to bring that into their life for themselves before they can even enjoy it appropriately with a partner. And a lot of times I've found that women are very shy, not all women, but there's a good percentage of women that are very um, modest and holding back on that very sacred part of them. And what they don't realize is that, that their orgasm is actually a direct connection to the divine. And that is not talked about enough. I mean, listen, we, we give birth. We, we, we are creators, not that we do it alone, but we're, we're the womb of the creation. So just the way that the course brings it up and the way that it connects to your breast and even your partner. Um, I've had wives have their husbands watch the, the uh, uh, secret sex. I think I called it um, sex. Are you getting any? <laughs> and it's just, it's just a different way of looking at it. And if you can get your partner to sit down with you and go through it with you, it can be a lot of fun. So that's well, and not to mention, I, I love that because if we don't know how to pleasure ourselves, how can you communicate that and relay that to your partner and to expect that they know what our body needs, whether man or woman being the one pleasing you, every body is different in what it needs to experience that as well. So um, it, it, yeah, I, I fully agree that that is a, a missing piece in, in what we, the, the whole topic is, is just so shunned in a lot of cases and to be able to be at the forefront, bringing it up in a, um, in a broader way. That's just, again, such a, such a beautiful thing that you're sharing. Thank you. I, I agree. And I, you know, I will bring the blocks up here again too, because there's a lot of trauma around sex. Um, I have found that those blocks can release trauma and emotion that has been stored. And once again, you don't need to talk about it. You don't need to know why your body knows how to release it. Yeah. And it's the pressure of the blocks that I've found. It's, I mean, it's like magic. It just does it for you. Um, and then when you finish and you couple it with your little self-pleasuring feather, <laughs> <laughs> you got the best of both worlds. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. Yes. Um, let's see. Let me see if there's anything else. Let me go to the course just for a moment. See what we got here. So um, this is a self-paced course. And what that means is you can take your time with it. There's 10 modules. And you can just work through it on your own. And I am offering three uh, support calls, which means you can have a 30 minute session with me before you start the course. The reason this is important is because you can tell me what your challenges are. And then I can better guide you as you go through the modules, um, like what to do, where to focus, where, where your perception should take you. Um, so that's very helpful. And then midway through the course, we could do another call and sort of help keep you on track, find out what you're doing, what you're not doing. And then, of course, at the end of the course, um, another 30 minute call so that we can wrap it all up. And you can really have an amazing program for your breast health, which is actually your entire body, uh, because you will go through each body part as we go through the course. But there's journal exercises, um, there's different rituals. I call them daily rituals of attention, mainly because women forget about themselves. <laughs> you know, they're so busy doing everything for everyone else that they forget where to focus their attention for themselves. And that's what I was talking about earlier, that that is where resentment and regret creep in. Um, when you're not taking care of yourself and you're taking care of everyone else. And it's also where resistance creeps in because you'll have so many excuses as to why you can't do it or get it done. Those excuses are your resistance. So I'm just trying to wrap it all up for you so that you can get an understanding of how it can benefit you. And actually, they are very easy things to do. Some of it is takes two minutes. Some of it takes 
10 minutes, but they're all simple. And on the call, I can also help you figure out how to fit it into your life so that it makes sense, so that you're not like completely overwhelmed um, with all these new daily attention rituals. And I call them rituals because women by nature are ritualistic. We, you know, when you're connected to the divine feminine and being connected to the divine feminine means you're also connected to the divine masculine. It is in no way putting that out of the, of the connection because both energies are one. But if you're embodying yourself as a woman, you need to get in touch with your feminine first so that you can operate and function fully as a woman and then understand the masculine and use it in ways that you, you would not believe how it can full force function your life. I mean, I feel when I'm operating in my feminine, I am in flow and I am empowered. And when I'm operating in my masculine, I'm very grounded and focused. So understanding these energies is it's the, one of the most important things you need to understand, I think, as a human, really, whether you're a male or a female. And we do get into those divine uh, masculine feminine energies in the course as well. Any comment on those feminine energy, masculine energy? Well, it's just, again, it, it's so needed because I think we've, we've been looking outside of ourselves for answers. And I think that's part of what creates that resentment regret resistance as well because the answers aren't out there they're all within us and for you to be able to provide simple steps that and, and I love it because it's the intention right it, it, it doesn't mean you have to spend hours per day but it does mean for whatever that two minutes ten minutes or longer is when your intention goes inward so that you can really start to listen and hear what your body is telling you and what it needs and then you have protocols that are very easy to adapt, then again, the, the change that can happen is, is rapid and it's needed because especially today, we as women have been pulled so far away from our power. And this is partly, I think, what's going on in the world. We need to be able to rise up and, and own our strength and share that and, and balance it with the masculine. And yeah. that, that's the point. It's all about the balance. And it's not that one is better than another, but when they're balanced and aligned, then, then truly magical things can happen. And, and we have a world in need of massive changes. And I think this is going to be a huge step for that. Thank you. I do too. I absolutely agree. Um, on this slide, you can see at the bottom, that is uh, Deanna's affiliate link. And I would love for her people. It, she's basically um, creating a community under this link with me. So it's thermographyforhealthny.com forward slash eight secrets dash Deanna. That is the link that you can use to sign up for the course. Um, and of course, if you don't use that link, um, just let me know that you're one of Deanna's people and I will make sure Deanna knows that you are involved. <laughs> Wonderful. Is there anything else you would like to share? Um, I don't think so. I think I feel complete. I think I've brought forth all that was in my cup. <laughs> well, and you absolutely um, just shared some incredible, I, I'm, I'm very excited. You know, that this is something like, I, I feel very excited about this discussion and about sharing this with the community. And um, again, this is just something so needed, whether man or woman, if you want to be in healthy relationship, and that's really what it comes down to, right? It's the connection and you were talking about, you know, what women use sex for or, or the experience that it should bring about. And I think for a lot of us, it's, it's the connector. Um, yeah. it's, it's not only the connector to our partner, but also to ourselves. And so just, again, such a such beautiful time for this. And um, I'm just so grateful that we're able to share that. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you for having me. I love your work. And I'm so happy to be a part of your community. Uh, likewise, Tammy. And thank you all so much for taking the time to listen. And I encourage you all to dive in. You will not resent it. <laughs> you will <laughs> love it. <laughs> yes. Right on with that. <laughs> yeah. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.